On today's show, Carl Anthony Towns traded to the New York Knicks. How does Cat fit in New York? And does this move put the Knicks on the same tier as the Boston Celtics? It's all coming up on today's Locked On NBA. You are Locked On NBA, your daily NBA podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up and welcome to another edition of Locked On NBA, the biggest stories with the local experts. I'm your host, Jackson Gatlin, also host of Locked On Rockets right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Now, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Look, NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. When you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the exact same page where you actually place your bets. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. So head on over to FanDuel.com. You can take a look at so many different things like the different season awards, who's going to win which conference, or just the outright Super Bowl favorites. Right now, the Kansas City Chiefs at plus 500 to win it all behind them the 49ers at plus 650 the Ravens at plus 800 the Buffalo Bills at plus a thousand and then the Houston Texans right there at plus 1300 so for all those odds and so much more be sure to visit fanduel.com joining us now is the host of locked on fantasy basketball Josh Lloyd you can track down wherever you listen to your podcasts or on YouTube just search locked on fantasy basketball and Josh we are just a couple weeks out from the start of the NBA season, which means fantasy talk is heating up and it's that time of year where people can have their hearts broken or be completely exhilarated by what goes down in their fantasy drafts and, and everything for this upcoming NBA campaign. Yeah, we're not that far away. Uh, media days and training camp and preseason and we're all ready to overreact and uh, look at things in the ways that are completely different to what we've thought for the last five months and then eventually track back and think how stupid we were to buy into something that happened on uh, October the 12th. That's all. That's always how it plays out. You get yourself incredibly hyped at the beginning of the season uh, just for some uh, deflating emotions to come in a little bit later on. Let's go ahead and what I want to do here is this is going to be kind of a I don't want to call it an intro to fantasy per se, but I want to maybe try to expose some of our our audience, our listeners to to the fantasy side of the game and kind of what they can expect to it. Maybe for some people who have kind of been on the fence in previous years or seasons about wanting to get into fantasy and haven't quite taken the plunge yet. So what is your pitch to people who have never played fantasy before fantasy basketball that, you know, maybe been on the fence about it in the past and, and why they should maybe look into getting into it? I think one of the things that that's across all sport, whatever it is, when you're playing a, a fantasy league, it is one of the easiest ways and one of the best ways I find to improve your knowledge of the entire league. It improves your knowledge of, of all 30 teams. You get to know intricacies and, and strengths and weaknesses of players that you wouldn't normally see. Like if you are you know, someone who, who watches the NBA and you watch your team, you might not know what's going on with 29 other teams, or maybe you know the ones that are in your division or your conference. You don't know what's going on across the league or what this player does or where this player has moved to because of the people that, that follow fantasy and, and get involved in it a lot. They know what's happening across the league. They know where everyone's moved in the hierarchy of players and who's out and who's in and where things are changing often quicker than a lot of other people because you have to be locked in. So if you want a way to be able to go, hey, I'm, I'm really enjoying what's happening with the NBA. I need to sort of lock in more. The best way to know the teams and know the players and know the trends is by playing fantasy and focusing on your team because you have to know everything that's going on across the entirety of the league versus you know, hyper-specific on your one team. Now, how do you, obviously fantasy has different degrees, right? There are some that take it incredibly seriously. And then there's, you know, the super casual, like maybe you throw together a fantasy league with an office party, whatever, that kind of thing. How do you kind of balance what you do and also your show he, as our resident locked as a resident fantasy basketball expert? How do you balance what you do to make it consumable for both the diehard fan and the more casual fantasy player? Yeah, that's a, you know, no matter what you do, that's going to be a challenge in anything, right? Is trying to make sure it's consumable to, to everybody. So usually you're putting out a, a level of, of information that is consumable by the majority. That's generally the idea. Like this is the majority that hits there, but there'll be some times where you go, well, we need to look at things from a more simple perspective or, or people that aren't playing in the majority on the, the easier side. And then also you need to focus then towards some who are playing in the harder leagues, the deeper leagues, the more complex situations, but just throwing little bits and pieces in. So your, your, your hype, your focus is mainly on the majority, but you, you, yeah, and all of that applies to everybody. Everyone can hear that and, and listen to that. And there are concepts that can apply through the whole spectrum of things 
things, but it's just then throwing little bits and pieces in and go, this won't apply to majority of you, but these are for the guys that play in these sort of leagues or this doesn't apply here and this is for those and those leagues. And you sort of just sprinkle those little bits and pieces through to try and cover off all those different areas. For the first timers who are potentially listening to this and thinking about getting into fantasy for the first time this season, obviously there's a bunch of different leagues and different rules and all sorts of different settings, which can seem maybe a little bit overwhelming to somebody who's never kind of ventured into that area before. What would you recommend is maybe, hey, if you've never done it, this this is what you should set the table for your first go around with fantasy basketball. Well, I know when I first started playing, like the, the style of game that, that I started playing was the, the the traditional category style of league, which is the one that I prefer and I find it the most engaging, the most interesting. There'll be some people, and I tend to agree with this, that they think that you're know, trying a fantasy point style league, which you know, mirrors a little bit more like fantasy football, where every sort of stat is just given a point number, then you get like 40 fantasy points for the game. That might be a little bit easier. I find it less, um, less engaging. It's less sort of brain work but that's also you know that might be what you're looking for someone just go well my guy got 50 today and your guy only got 45 therefore i, I beat you in this matchup by you know three points what a great win by me and that might, might be the sort of level you're looking for so if you're looking for something like that it's just every player scoring a certain number of fantasy points then there's a fantasy points league if you're looking for something with a little bit more yeah uh, you know slight it's, it's not super deep it's not super complex it actually is a pretty sort of easy concept the category league but it just has a, a added layer of strategy on top of it and if you're the person who likes the, the additional layer of strategy and, and wants to focus in and and be better at, at what you're doing and taking this a little bit more serious then that, that's the way you can go as well but yeah it is a very it is easy to jump into a category league as a first timer and pick it up it, it would take five minutes but in terms of if you want that league to say on a more um basic or, or casual idea then a points league can work to as an introduction to that as well because then you don't have the the trip ups that you might get associated with something like a like a category league at first again not that there's a big difference between the levels of complexity but there is something small in between those two I know that you yourself conduct more fantasy leagues than I would ever have any business being a part of. I don't know how you do all of what you do and keep track of it all uh, without losing your mind. But for for someone looking to maybe kind of get into it who doesn't have a group of friends to play with or, a, you know, an office, a community of their own to try and create their own league. What kind of resources are out there to, for them to maybe get involved with an online league? OK, so there is a few different options. So I run a big sort of large large uh, group of leagues and I'm trying to calculate off the top of my head, how many leagues we're running this, this season. I think it's like, there's like a hundred and something individual different leagues in there um, with all different formats um, in the process of finalizing those at the moment. And we've got, we've had like about 1500 applications through to get people into those. So there's those sort of leagues. If you go onto like a, a Yahoo, you can just click your know, free public league and join into that with a bunch of those randomly assign you people. If you want um, leagues that don't necessarily have a bunch of random people who may not be invested and fall out of interest with it during the season. There is another website called FBI basketball, which runs a bunch of um, leagues as well with people who are into fantasy and, and going to take it seriously and well, well run leagues too. So they're probably your three main ones. Again, if you're joining in my ones at the moment, not sure there's going to be any spots left for it, but uh, FBI basketball, or there's the free options over at, uh, at Yahoo or at fan tracks where you can just go click it and say, I'm just going to join this league and bang, you're in. And then the draft happens and then you're ready to go. Now, obviously, it is dependent on what type of league you're in, what kind of strategies you might find yourself using uh, throughout the draft process for your individual league. But what are some of the what are some of the strategies that you employ when you're going like walk us through your draft day prep, either what you're doing before your draft or, or maybe some little things that you've picked up over the years, things that you implement during the draft to make sure that you come away you know, in the best possible position to succeed. I always find this question a, a difficult one. Jackson, just because of like, you, you'll you be like, hey, what do you do? And I go, well, oh, I, I work on this 12 hours a day, 365 <laughs> days a year. So I'm pretty sure not everyone's going to have that level of of prep into doing it. And part of that's prep for myself, but it's prep in terms of putting the information out, out to people. So it's a little bit different, right? But like, if you want to just break it down to, to basic parts, you just need to know who plays for what team, number one, right? So you need to know like who has changed and what situations have volatility. Like where is there a situation where someone's moved and that might be an opportunity for them to do more that others haven't necessarily seen or someone else to do less that others haven't necessarily seen and finding those sort of gaps in there. And if again, if you want to just break it down even further into the most basic thing when looking at players, like we want players who do more things, like who generate more stats, which is a, a relatively easy thing to do. It's usually the better players that do that. But if you want to have a look at, is this guy going to be here and where is he going to sit? Look at what you think their usage is going to be and what you think their playing time is going to be. Because 
if you get more minutes, you've got more of a chance to, to generate more stats. And if you get the ball in your hands more, you get more of a chance to do more things as well. And that those can usually, especially looking at a fantasy points league, the more usage you get, the more minutes you play, the better your fantasy points production ends up being as like the most blanket generic rule uh, as well. Like that's, again, it's really straightforward, basic thing. But if you're just looking for one thing to go, well, who, who's playing more minutes? Who's getting more usage? Well, they're the guys I probably look to versus someone else who I might think is a good basketball player. But like, it doesn't matter if they're a good player playing 27 minutes with 10 usage on a really good team, whereas someone on a terrible team plays 35 minutes and has the ball, dominates the ball the whole time around. Well, that guy on the bad team, even if you think he's a bad player, he's going to put up more numbers. So if I were to quiz you right now, who are going to be the top five players that go in pretty much every fantasy league across the globe this upcoming season once the drafts start hit, start you know firing off and everybody's on the board? Who are those top five players? I'd be pretty bad at my job if I couldn't give you those uh, <laughs> numbers straight off, Jackson. The, the top four, I guarantee we're going to be Nikola Jokic, Victor Wembanyama, Luka Doncic, and Shea Gulas alexander Almost without, with whatever format, they are going to be in there. Now, Giannis Antetokounmpo will probably join into that top five in points leagues. He will be there in, in category leagues for some as well. And the other name is, is probably Anthony Davis, who jumps into that um, top five discussion. So let's say there's six guys who are in that mix for, for the top five with... Uh, Jokic, Wemby, Shea, and, and Luke are pretty locked in as, as the top four in basically everywhere. I couldn't I couldn't let you get out of here without giving us a quick reaction to the Carl Anthony Towns trade, which shook the NBA landscape because our first two segments were focused on the reactions from the Knicks and the Wolves perspective. So give us a quick fantasy perspective on what the cat trade means, Josh. Yeah, I think what it does is that yeah, in previous seasons, Carl Anthony Towns was a really clear sort of first round player, top 12, top 10, top five fantasy guy, right? Um, and then when Gobert arrived, there were things happened. He moved to power forward. And what happens when you move to power forward is you get less opportunities to get rebounds. You get less, less opportunities to block shots. You probably take more shots from your perimeter. So your field goal percentage drops. And he also had the issue of Anthony Edwards taking more usage. So he's dropped to become like a, a top 40 player instead of a top 10 player. Going to the Knicks, not saying he's necessarily going to get all that usage back because Jalen Brunson is still there, but he is going to get more rebounds. He is going to probably, I would say, block more shots. Like he used to be a 1.6 blocks per 100 possessions guy, and now he's one. And yeah, his field goals can go up. His rebounds dropped considerably. They can all go way back up because that Knicks team, like I know people will tell me, no, they're actually really awesome and Josh Hart's a great rebounder. They don't have any good rebounders. Like Josh Hart's fine as a rebounder, but OG's below average. Jalen Brunson's below average. These guys aren't particularly strong rebounders. They lost. Mitchell Robinson's out. As our Hart and Shots are gone. Julius Randle's not there. He's going to get a lot more rebounds. So I think Carl Anthony Towns moves from being like a your top 40 fantasy guy. Maybe if I was conservative, I'd say top 20. He could go back into a first round sort of a player in that scenario because the things that all dropped him back down is probably going to make him better in, in New York. They're all sort of, they could potentially at least bounce back, not to the same levels, but but improve. On the other side of things, well, it's just a basic math thing, Jackson, because it's you know, one guy goes out, two guys go in. So it's hard for Randall and DiVincenzo to be able to have the exact same value in New York because everything has got to be shared around. And I think Randall's going to start. I don't think Dante is. And I don't think Dante is going to be able to get the same minutes that he got in New York as well. So I think both of those guys lose some value. And I think, I actually, I don't think Randall's going to get those same minutes either. So it's just squeezing an extra player into that rotation. Then yeah, there's down trickle effects of guys like Dillingham and Alexander Walker playing less for Minnesota. But the value of where Randall and Dante sat in New York is going to have to be a little bit lower in uh, in Minnesota just, be, just because of numbers and trying to squeeze in where, where they fit in, in the existing hierarchy there. If that breakdown wasn't enough to get you hooked on Locked On Fantasy Basketball and the type of incredible information you can find over there, I don't know what was. Josh, what do you have cooking up over there in, in preparation for the season? We are just finishing off a fantasy preview of all 30 teams. So I've got about six of those to go. And there's going to be a bunch of stuff like yeah, uh, updated lists on sleepers and, and busts based on your know, uh, average draft position across different sides would do things like the uh, upside guys to take a crack out at the, the last round of your drafts. There'll be a bunch of different mock drafts that we do as well. And um, yeah, just some, uh, some sort of de debating shows with other fantasy analysts over the next week, just sort of discussing maybe some of the issues that, that there's, you know, non-consensus opinions on and trying to get to the bottom and provide different perspectives on that. That's all sort of coming up over the next week or so. For all your fantasy basketball needs, go track them down over at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Josh, thanks for stopping by Locked On NBA with me. No worries, man. 